Let's get some art on these walls. In today's video, I'll share four simple, easy to do art projects that are perfect for a kid's room or nursery. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back. My name is Shada Campbell. Welcome to my baby's room. <laughs> this is the nursery for our little man. Yes, we're having a boy. We're expecting him in May. And I've been obsessing over the nursery since about Christmas, at least since Christmas. If you want to see a nursery tour, it is a must watch. I'm so excited about this video. I released it earlier this week. I'll link it in the description. Go give it a watch because I shared all my craft projects and knitting and DIY and furniture. And today we're going to focus on easy, fun art projects that you can hang on your kids' walls. You could even do some of them with your kids if you have children already, but they're perfect for a nursery. Of course, I'm using one of them in my own nursery and all four of them were actually made in under an hour. So let's get to the studio and get our paints out. Okay, we're back in the studio and we're going to create three simple, fun, whimsical, cute, is that enough adjectives? Uh, pieces of artwork that are perfect for a kid's room, a nursery, or a shower gift. I think if you're um, going to a friend's shower, this would be so special to create a personalized piece of artwork that you made. That's the coolest thing. So let's get started. Oh, and I'll mention all of these projects are going to use, you know, watercolor paper and watercolor paint. You do not need the same paper and paint paint as me, just use what you have because they really don't demand um, anything special. Okay, friends, let's talk supplies. Really use what you have on hand, but I'm also gonna show you what I'm using. I have these beautiful art boards from Canson. They are cold pressed watercolor paper, but they're like a board, so they're really stiff. Um, look for those, they're an awesome product, especially for making art. And then I have a brand new set of paints from Munio, um, two glasses of clean water, paper towel for blotting my brush, and then I am working with a number three pointed round brush. If I wet it, you can really see the beauty of the pointed round. It has a nice large belly that holds lots of paint and then it comes to a delicate point for detail work. First up, we're doing a simple graphic piece of art based on text, do sweet dreams, dream big, love you to the moon and back. <laughs> In pencil at the lower half of the page, I am laying down height lines and base lines. So I want a line where each letter is going to start and stop. <laughs> and I'll put down the S and the T in sweet first. That makes it really easy to kind of get everything centered and I'm not gonna run out of room. And you can also put what's called a waistline. That's a line between your height and base lines that shows, you know, where the center of the E would be or where the top of the W, the middle of the W should stop. Once you've done your simple print, it could be upper or lower case or a mix of both. You're just going to go around your printed letters. So this is a really simple way to create bubble letters. And the thing is, I don't want them to look too perfect. I want them to look a little weird, a little wrong, a little wonky, as I always say. Um, but you could transfer from a printout, right? So if you're not confident with lettering, just print it and, uh, transfer it and then I got rid of some of my pencil lines and then I am just using black watercolor paint so it's just uh, you know a black pan paint with a little bit of water mixed in and we are going to use that nice delicate pointed round brush to fill in these letters this is when the pointed round comes in really handy because you have that nice fine tip for uh, you know making straight lines and getting in those little corners but it also holds enough paint that it's not annoying to do letters and to do some of the larger areas. You can do it like really blacked out as well, or you can get a bit of a watercolor effect by starting light and adding some darker paint in as you go. So there we go, sweet dreams. It's on the lower third of the page. Now we need to mix up a nice um, yellow or beige or orange for our stars. So I'm mixing I want a really subtle, almost grown up color. I'm mixing a little bit of yellow ochre with brown. And then I have this really dark 
um, really reddish brownish orange that I'm mixing in there. And it's always good to have a piece of scrap paper handy. You know, make sure you like the color before you start painting, but I'm going for a kind of brownie coppery orange. And uh, we'll use just that delicate fine tip to paint the outline of a star. I think it could look actually quite cute if you just did like the outline, but I decided I wanted to fill mine in because I wanted that extra bit of color. But either way, you're doing something that's supposed to look whimsical, so just outlining them could look so sweet. I'm placing a few at random and then I knew I wanted to put a crescent moon kind of above the S in sweet. So off to the left, starting with quite a light orange coppery color and then kind of adding some darker paint into the wet area to give me that watercolor effect. Doing some tinier stars there. I don't want to add too many. I want to keep it simple and graphic. And that's it, a hand lettered piece of whimsical art that's perfect for any gender neutral nursery. I also created a digital art print for my nursery and you can print it for your nursery or kids room. I give weekly bonus content on Patreon, starts at two bucks a month. So channel patrons head over to Patreon after today's video to get this art print. Next up, I want to do something that's a little less um, maybe adult, a little more kid, a little more whimsical. And we're going to take an inanimate object and give it some personality. So you could choose anything from an umbrella to a cloud. Um, oh gosh, I don't know, a strawberry, whatever. We're going to make a really simple form and just kind of give it a happy face and make something super fun and as I said, very kid friendly and whimsical. Have I said the word whimsical enough yet? No? Okay, <laughs> didn't think so. So for this one, I'm doing a lemon. I'm mixing up a nice, warm, rich yellow that I really like, but you could do any object. I wanna stress that. You don't have to do a lemon. It could be any vegetable or fruit or telephone. I don't know. Uh, I'm sketching an oval on my artboard and then kind of figuring out the lemony shape once I have the oval in place. We can add some leaves. For the face, it's just two curving lines for the eyes, a curving line for the mouth, and then some little cheeks and eyelashes. So super simple. Then for the painting portion, I'll wet an area of the page and then I release some of the yellow paint into that wet area. So I'm doing a nice wet into wet. I want the yellow of the lemon to look messy, to look like that very watercolor look where some areas are darker, some are lighter, some are more transparent. So I have a few um, kind of shades of yellow on the palette, you'll notice, and I kind of pull from the bright yellow and then I get a little of the dark yellow and I, it's giving me this really interesting um, texture on the lemon. Little brown for the stem. I'm doing these messy leaves. I'm actually painting quite quickly. I just want everything to look really free, the way a child would paint. And um, I'll put a leaf right on top of the lemon here so I get a little bit of blending and bleeding of the green and yellow. And gosh, he's looking cute already. <laughs> Do as many leaves as you like. Again, with the wet into wet, you can play around with different transparencies of green or different shades of green. Uh, keep building up the color on the lemon if you like, if you've got some areas that are too light and we'll let him dry. Once he is dry, I just took like a little bit of a pinky peach on the end of my brush and did two messy ovals for his rosy cheeks. And then I used a really saturated black paint. It still has water in it, but it's just a nice black watercolor. And we did his little, you know, if you've already done the face in pencil, it's just as simple as going over it. Now you could do that face with a marker, let's be real. You don't have to do it with a paintbrush. And then this is totally optional, but I just thought he might look cute with a little outline. So I used some of my crayons, watercolor crayons, to um, add a bit of an outline, but you could do that with a pastel, you could do that with a regular crayon. Of course, if it's watercolor, you can render it out with water if you don't like it or if you wanna soften it. But um, there we go, Mrs. Lemon or Mr. Lemon, looking quite cute and the perfect addition to any nursery. <laughs> Thank you. 
Next up is some floral name art. I've uh, marked out a square. I did measure for this one just two inches in on each side and did like a very rough rectangle. And then across the bottom, you're going to write the name in a very simple print and we'll do some watercolor brush lettering. So again, with that pointed round brush, you use the tip of the brush anytime you're going up towards the top of the page and you add pressure uh, anytime you're pulling the brush down towards yourself, towards the bottom of the page. So in that way, you get the beautiful thick and thin lines that are so uh, classic brush lettering. Blah, blah brush lettering. <laughs> and then here's the thing about this one. Not only is it personalized with a name, but you can personalize the color palette. So if you're making it for yourself and you know the colors you want in your nursery, you can do something that actually matches or contrasts or complements. So take some time with this to mix your paints, have some scrap paper there and test all your colors and make sure you've got everything looking the way you like. I'm doing kind of a modified primaries. So blue, um, with a really warm yellow, a bit of magenta instead of red and a coppery orange as well as beige. Who wouldn't want some beige? <laughs> um, so I'll start with my largest flower and that is just a really loose um, magenta sort of four petal flower doing a bunch in different sizes all over my rectangle. Remember to stay within that rectangle that you marked out. That's kind of the only rule. Um, actually, all the flowers are sort of growing upwards towards the top of the page. That was another rule that I sort of followed. But um, you're just going to pick, you know, for each color that you already figured out, you're going to choose. Is that going to be, you know, yellow is for a rose, blue is for a leaf, magenta is for this other big flower. I use the beige for my largest leaves. And um, in that way, it comes together really simply simply. You can um, layer all the flowers and leaves. And then once the burst of florals is coming together, you can begin adding detail. Like I'm using the coppery brown on the stamens and then a really dark brown on the magenta flowers to just add that, that extra detail to the center. I'm building up a little bit of darker color using dark yellow and a dark pink. And then I'm finishing the whole piece with this wonderful rich copper and just adding some tiny little flowers. So a little bit more detail detail and um, gosh this one is just so much fun to paint and again it's it's so special because it's so personalized with the name and a specific color palette you can make something that is really going to make your nursery sing if you have a child named Minnie be sure to email me and I'll send you this print <laughs> Our fourth art project is the one that I used in my own nursery. It's so simple to create. Start with watercolor paper. So not an artboard, but real paper. This is 140 pound hot pressed, couple large brushes. And then I'm using tube paints to create a really dark, rich blue. So I use Payne's gray, Prussian blue, and a little bit of magenta with lots of water. Using tube paints is a great way to mix up a lot of one color. Um, so that's what I've done here. And then I'm gonna fill in the circle that I drew. You can do a lot of wet into wet here. You just want to make a big mess. The weirder and messier, the better. Just like the lemon, you want that watercolor effect. So keep building color until you get it looking dark the way you like it. And uh, once it is dry, totally dry, we're going to rip it out. And I just happened to have a good bowl that was about the right size. But I imagine if you look in your kitchen, you'll find a bowl about the size that you need. That'll help you rip out a circular shape. And the result is this beautiful ripped paper edge with the white showing through. Okay, next up, we're going to take a new fresh piece of paper. I bought a cream piece at an art store, but you could do any color you like. And we are going to glue that in. I'm just testing it out in the mat. It looks good. Glue it in using a glue stick or rubber cement, something that won't cause like bubbles. And then using paint pens or gel pens, or you could use a bit of gouache or acrylic paint. We're going to make a starry night sky. I didn't want to do a splatter painting. I didn't want it to look too realistic. I wanted to keep it 
you guessed it, whimsical. And then same thing with the crescent moon. Like I don't want it looking perfect. I want it looking like a storybook, like a children's book. And for that reason, I also added some gold stars. So everything's looking, you know, very fairy tale, very perfectly imperfect. And then I wrote good night moon. I just marked center on my paper, did it in pencil about a thousand times. When I was happy with it, I used a Pigma Micron with archival ink. This is the 08 nib and I went over it and then I went over it to thicken it to get a nice weight to those letters. At the last minute, I added a face to the moon, cause why not? And then you throw it in a frame and it's, I mean, a frame can make any art look so good. So keep that in mind. A little white mat and a frame goes a long way. So this was sort of new for me, coming up with art for kids, art for a nursery, but I had a lot of fun with it. You know I love a whimsical painting, and um, I think all of them, as I said, are fairly approachable. And the animated inanimate object, that would actually be a great one to do with kids, and they could create art for their own room. If that's the stage you're at, I think that would be such a fun idea. It could be nothing but scribbles. Once you mat it and put it behind glass, it's gonna look great. Oh, I hope you'll give one or two of these a try. As I say, they're good bang for your buck. They're really simple, but the effect is quite lovely and so personal as well. Make sure to watch my nursery tour. I really want you to see it. It's a lot of fun. I'm gonna link it in the description. And patrons, be sure to download your digital artwork and you can have the same art in your nursery as I have in mine. Head over to Patreon after the video. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe.